So I'd like to talk about what it means that a person might have been tried as a young adult and whether or not that means it's it makes sense to put them on death row at such a young age. Um, that's a really hard topic to discuss. I need to talk about it. It is something I'm already thinking about. It's something I already have thoughts about. And it seems to me unfair, especially, it seems to me unfair considering how much leeway we allow our Caucasian brothers, sisters, um, to be innocent people, how much we will look at them in film, television, and news, and we'll see them as people who are younger hearted and more capable of being childlike and innocent. And we'll just grant them all these pardons because they're white and for no other reason. Um, and it's disturbing, really. It's disturbing to think that any race can be more childlike and freely playful um, at heart than any other race. That's ridiculous. That's really ridiculous. Um, and you see it all the time. You see, you know, there's a story of... Um, there's a story of a very potent, very powerful, and in the Nazi community in the current United States of America, uh, you know, he was he was taken to jail after after inciting Nazi propaganda and wearing offensive costuming, wearing horns, wearing very deliberately painted costume that supports a white supremacist agenda and also supports you know in that agenda it supports the obliteration of darker skinned peoples and other races outside of the white race the caucasian race and he's taken to jail and we all read in the news you know the major news outlets that he's being offered uh, organic food and they're putting into account his request for organic food and not letting him be housed anywhere where he can't get that better treatment that nice treatment he automatically has this voice where he can request this better treatment and now I'm thinking about someone who was not necessarily a white supremacist uh, but was a white man a white man Edward Snowden, um, who, or the man who went through the WikiLeaks trials, who leaked a bunch of government records to a Wikipedia page, um, served it to the community, gave it to the community, um, real government records, and he served it, um, to the community, to the people, um, who wanted to read it um, and I read about two three months ago um, that his trials have been prolonged for months over and over they've been prolonged uh, for the fear that his mental health is on the line which is something unheard of I have never heard if a single instance of a black person who is on you know on the shit list on the list for possible imprisonment I've never heard of such a uh, bending you know I've never heard of such a leeway or a kindness being considered for their mental health and and putting off their imprisonment because they're worried about their mental health at the time. I've never heard of such a thing in my life. So it doesn't surprise me 
now, though I wish it didn't. Um, it didn't doesn't surprise me that the first time I've heard of such a thing, of somebody being kept from being immediately imprisoned for the sake of their own mental health, for the worry of the good kind overlords who are determining these things as being in regards to what they might have been experiencing at the time of being indicted and having it of, or the time of being accused and having to go through the process of the pre-trials and whatnot before you go to the um, before you get in prison or the pre the, the pre happenings to this um, so that's something else that has boggled my mind never heard of it um, someone being put off from being imprisoned who violated a law in a pretty major way um, or in a pretty trackable way that can get a lot of could get you in a lot of trouble and they're putting off his trials these are ways that that we see white people getting the benefit of the doubt. And that's a key walk away from this. White people are more likely to get the benefit of the doubt. I mean, how many times have you been black and walking into a store and you suddenly are on edge just a bit and you know that somebody is looking at you like, are you gonna steal something? Are you gonna steal something? I'm a, I'm a security guard, I'm, you know? How many times have you started to consider whether or not you were acting funny for no apparent reason other than you, you walked into a store, you existed and you're black. So this is, this is what it is, that you being black automatically in the racist mind that makes you an object of threat and makes you an object to be eliminated and subdued makes you an object that is worthy of suspect whether or not you have any intention whatsoever other than you were like I have a free hour in my life I want to go to this store and see what what's there what is there what I might want to get, what I want to buy. Um, I have a free hour. I want to have some fun. And now it's in my mind that you think I'm going to commit a crime since I'm black and I've walked into a store and I appear to be in a good mood and I appear to be looking for some enjoyment. So that's really strange. Uh, it's a strange feeling. It can be otherworldly to be ostracized like that. Um, such that you might start doubting yourself. You might start, you know, getting into your own head and questioning your own motives into coming into the store on a free hour. Like it's the most wild thing in the world that you would never do. Wow black woman wants to walk into a store and buy something just for fun, just for the mood of the day. <laughs> it's bizarre. It makes something that doesn't need to be made. Um, and it's what you gotta deal with if you're black in a, in a world that is dominated by white males and white male supremacists as well. Um, and people who are not having lucid conversations about race and racial hierarchies that we have to navigate and what that means to begin with and what we can do to not let these extraneous, chaotic, useless thought get into our heads, um, which are not conducive to building a better world, better 
better places for us to be as individuals. So it's messed up. It's messed up that that's how it is. Um, So it's strange to me that that it's all black and white. It's all cut and dry um, when it comes to the systematic rendering of black bodies. Um, and I mean that word, rendering. Kind of like you render, you know, you render something on a wire. You render it till all the fat has dripped off of it. Um, and there's nothing but the bare husk of what was, what was originally there. There's nothing but the bare muscle, the bare, the bare bones, maybe. So, that's weird to me. It's weird to me that you can't look at a black child and think that they're innocent and full of love. Um, that you can't see these other forms of love that may not directly replicate your known form of love, but you can't look at it and see it for what it really is, which is full-hearted, unconditional, giving spirit, just as you would see in any kind-hearted soul. Um, but you will wash over it with your jealousies, rages, and grudges, and contempt, and you won't, you won't open your eyes just to get a clearer view. It's like, sometimes you're not looking at something clearly. Sometimes you do need to focus in a little bit, refocus, um. So it's, it's really sad that that's how it goes, that you'll erase an entire whole method of giving and receiving love and being whole and present. And you'll, you'll say it's not real since it doesn't directly, in the most outer trappings of it, mirror your idea of love and unconditional love and giving and you won't you won't acknowledge the peace you won't acknowledge and make peace either and it makes you wonder if there's anybody there behind that mask we're all carrying a mask So this is what I want to say, is that white people, regardless, you know, of where they're from or what their subdivisions are, even within the white race, are given the upper hand, they're given the benefit of the doubt, they're more readily perceived as innocent people, as caring, as, as whole and capable of love which is bizarre because you're that's the whole point of cultures you're gonna have different cultures you'll have different tricks and techniques but everyone is giving love and receiving love you need that to be alive so it's strange to me that we will be giving the benefit of the doubt to these people for only the reason that they are white men and perhaps this makes us perceive them more readily as giving and receiving love and there's no room to to question if it's righteous to take away a person's entire life um, to have them set there in a prison cell in a prison setting um, with all these people who are also imprisoned and they know that they have a death day um, 
coming up and they know their death day and whatever they did happened at a young age before they were seasoned adults. There could be a huge magnitude between what a person does the day before they turn 25 versus after they've got that seasoned adulthood. And maybe, you know, maybe the age, the literal age isn't, isn't the only thing. Maybe, maybe the literal age isn't the only thing. It's something to consider though. It's something to consider. Uh, why is it that people are considered more mature at a younger age when they're black already? Why is it that we cannot be privy to childish notions and ideas and innocences and mistakes? Why is it that our mistakes are more punishable and ought to be corrected with a harder hand with really wider much wider really wide extra hands that go on into the future that is far reaching long standing and not directly related to what happened what situation we got into what we did with our, with our time that broke the law that, that isn't necessary to, to be in this, this world, the economy that we, we struggle to operate in. So this is an idea, this is an idea that I want to explore does it make sense to put someone on a life sentence even after they have shown signs of maturity, emotional maturity, openness, charming behavior like that is beautiful and open as any person you'd meet outside of the prison? Does it make sense to put them in permanent exile from the rest of the world and to, to kill them at the end? This is something I want to discuss. Um, why does it necessitate that someone has ruined their lives, has made some sort of major motion that may have not been clear-headed and maybe was a result of being involved with gangs, maybe involved with ideas about their race that are perpetuated, you know, um, ideas that, that they didn't themselves might have not been so keen of due to being young and inexperienced, but does it make sense to lock up the inexperience for the rest of their life and not to release them, despite them showing every motion to be better people, despite them showing every notion of being as regular as any person in the outside world. Furthermore, it's strange that so many people spend so much time in prison that they start getting diagnosed with major depression and other mental illnesses that they never showed signs of before being imprisoned. It's strange that people who are healthy individuals and may have not committed violent crimes, may have not may have not had a real strange history of being abnormally violent um, and destructive. And it's strange that they might develop a severe mental illness and still need to serve this same amount of time they were, they were told they need to serve to begin with. It's strange. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. If a person's getting debilitating mental illnesses over um, over the guilt they feel about being a criminal and the prison is no longer serving the purpose of making a person rethink 
their actions and learn from that. If they're starting to get sick over what they're experiencing right now. So then what is the point of having prisons and prison sentences that are written stone, so to speak? It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It needs reworking.